this is how sad it's getting people the very very last thing I wanted to be doing unfortunately ah, is this is this varnish still wet I'll be starting to pack my gear up it's a shame because I had some really good sport this last winter I've done really well on the trout Arctic char, rainbows, big rainbows, big brown trout, done really well. First, the, it was the best winter I've ever had for fly fishing, I'm going to be perfectly honest. And now, it's all going to be starting to pack up, put it all away. I've got to remember that I crushed a barb on that one, that's a barbless hook on there. So, I'm just going to peel it off, put it on neat. That one did work, can you see the uh, the glue there? That actually held on the re real seat there. What should be really doing, because look, I think this is going to be put away, I'm going to say, for months and months. That's my gut feeling. That's from making the film, obviously. This should all be clean. This should be clean with a tea towel, handkerchief, something like that. Well, clean handkerchief. Clean cloth is what I'm trying to say. I had hoped Colin might come down. He's got some chicken over there. Let's take that apart. Wow, what a sad day. Colin is up there, zooming around. If he does come down, I've actually got three pieces of chicken on the bird feeding table over there. We've got bird feeders here. I might actually show you some of the footage I've got of um, different birds that we get on the bird feeder. It's quite interesting if you're into the uh, into, into bird and wildlife. This reel was the one I reversed round you remember I put it up in a film, sent to me by a friend, it was Tony Palmer's reel, like the reel, not sure about the uh, uh, the speed wind thing on it, you know, the retrieve ratio on it, but I do like the line, it really punches out a long way, soft, supple, really good, and you can also, if you see there, be stupid and wind the fly right into the tip ring. I'll tell you another thing you can do people, you can actually, if you've got space, probably you can't get out very far, can you, I'm lucky I've got a bit of lawn there, you can actually do some casting, can't you? You can do hone up your casting for when you when you do get out. This one here, just show you, is the fly of the well, it's been the fly of the year for a long time for me. That is, let's get that wing round the other way. It's all been chewed up, but there it is. Look, that's the pearly daddy, the world famous pearly daddy. Very very good fly. I like it in the smaller size now. I used to get a size eight. Sid Knight used to tie it on a, on a size uh, 8, I quite like it on a 10 now, it just seems to be a little bit better. Right, this one can go away. I tell you what, I could almost do a bit of casting over there with this, it's so tempting, it just feels nice to be able to actually get a rod in your hand, doesn't it, you know? But I fear they'll be going away for some time. Another little four weight. This one was, if I have a look, that's a neutral density, weight forward four neutral density. So if you're a beginner out there and you want to learn to cast, generally a weight forward helps that line to go out. It does help it to go out. It might be a bit easier for your casting to learn to load the rod up. If you look in our in our film playlist, there's one um, up there on casting. It's very, very good with Rob up in the, the Rutland area, he's an instructor, makes it look easy, well is when you're an instructor, and this one was a good little fly, like as, is it, I think this is one of Tony's, it's like a little cop, copper coloured bead head black, and that's a nice, I'm not sure that's a bit of marabou on the back there, watch one big puff of wind take these away, they're all put away unfortunately, Just one last look at them before I get them away. But nice sunny day. The net has had so many fish and it's ridiculous. It's been uh, repaired, 
with duct tape obviously and the jacket has never been washed since I bought it about 35 years ago. Mm. So I'm going to break these down now. These spider plants type things, they throw up a big shoot. Once they do that, they break down and make smaller ones. But I've got from one plant here, one, two, three, another one here, one, two, three, four. So I've got extra plants there and I've got a space around here. See, so around here, I put these in. They just grow like a sort of weed. These are put in with them really come to much. I'm going to dig this out and I reckon one, two, three, four across there. And this is a genuine old pump um, that I uh, paid a couple of pounds for about 40 years ago. And that's how they used to get the water up from the well. It's marked on the side there. No other names on it. We've actually had birds, blue tits, going up here near nesting. So I'm going to clear this one out. We had so much rain down here. You've seen the well. Hi, hi everybody. It came right up to here and that's just dropping now, just starting to go down. So that level there is where my house foundations lie. So the water's not really gone down, the water table is very high still. Right, I think I'll get those plants sorted out. I'll show you what they turn into. Let me go down here. So this is what they turn into, great big giant ones like this. So those small ones are exactly the same species. Those in there are a little bit different, but they throw up. This one might be having it in here. As the leaves come out and the others go down, and they just die like this. So you can pull these out, just like they just come away. You can always have a tidying up session, which I will do, I will do in here. But that's how they come up. I could probably put one in there, actually. You can see they do actually uh, thrive. And here, where I took the weed out, well, that blanket weed has gone clear now. And that level's dropped as well. This hole here, just so you know that um, Captain Stupid in the pull and armament was sitting over there with Mike and his air rifle and targeting general things around the garden, what we could hit, flower pots and things. I said, I'll go for that lily flower. Unfortunately, the lily flowers here, it goes through the lily flower and through the pond uh, liner. So that's that stuff. That was really sensible, Graham. Talk about a backstop. Right, to dig these out, I think I'm going to put the whole pot on the lawn. I can clear all the rubbish out. I'd much sooner be fishing, making fishing films than doing this, but a lot of people just want to see, well, I guess what other people are doing to pass the time in this endless lockdown of disaster. It's pretty serious stuff. If I can get these out, I can show you. These guys actually need some water. I find the way to get them out is just rock it like this to loosen the edge. I don't want to drop it because the uh, whole thing will split. See, that's loosened around there. Then I get all the rubbish out. Doesn't hurt to give it, it. There's something about working with soil and gardening, and that is a, a de stressor. So, break it from around the edge. This was one big plant, so I know the roots are going to be down there. I'm probably going to clip a few roots as well. It doesn't matter, these things grow. And obviously, I can rake the lawn up. It was what would happen if I did it all over here. The dirt goes in these cracks here, which I haven't pointed yet. Dirt goes in there, and then the weeds grow. Then I slide it all out. This one in particular, just to amuse ourselves. Yes, it has an ant's nest in the bottom of it. Oh joy. I've got my, uh, see how that's what we call bound up there. Where it's become pot bound really. And if I want to get them really big, you plant them out in the open. But not red ants, luckily. Use all your the crocking, I use bits of brick, anything, 
so that you get drainage crocks in the bottom of the pot like this otherwise roots just rot out I know before it to drain see this is a load of this root I'm going to chop out and then this is the way I'm going to split this down gardeners turn away now I don't think there's many people go gardening with a great big log splitting axe, but I do. There we go. Now this was one clump here from one plant. It's shot out four different ones now and they all stay small unless I break them up. Which I have no idea whether this is a way to do it. All I can tell you over the years, I split loads of these and they've all grown. So they've got to be pretty, pretty tough old buzzards. I don't mind losing some of these bits of soil as well. I don't mind loosening up those roots like this up. And get rid of all that soil. I've got soil around there. Some of the roots will just be loose bits. There we go. Pull the dead part off of that. And there is one free plant ready for transplanting. Same here, you just got to pick your line and just split through that. It's almost like a See what it's like, it's like a pineapple. Get your line on the plant and just hack through it like that. Don't know about all those bits, just wants that one bit of root there. That's the original dead shoot before when it was one plant. That's the original dead one. go. See how tightly packed the soil gets? This would be the main route there. So I've got all the old roots out. I've got all the old roots out there and I've salvaged another two plants there. So I've got six from two. So we're back in the frame and these two will eventually throw up a shoot as well and then I'll be able to split those in a couple of years. It's free plants, folks. I don't know about this lockdown people, it's just, they can send you over the top. I'm afraid I've gone totally over the top. Here we go. There's one thing I've hated for a long time. 
there's a couple over here that are just so perfect they're so smarmy and everything they get everything their own way look at them a couple of cutie pies here just look at them I've had these years 30 years the paint's peeling he's had his face blasted off by what looks like a hand grenade and this this woman's got her hand up here in his wallet now isn't that not that can't be right I think it's his wallet this believe it or not is Romeo and Juliet now I've got nothing against Shakespeare but while we're doing the garden we said to the wife why don't we get rid of that statue it would make the circle look a lot bigger so <laughs> let's make sure we've got the cameras rolling this is where the saying comes from I'm gonna knock your block off they're always typical aren't they typical of a young couple they've got everything I'll tell you what they haven't got they haven't got a seven pound sledgehammer in the kisser I'm gonna knock your block right off darling this will wipe the sm smirk off your face <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it oh my word oh god Now I'm going to hit him in the wallet. <laughs> My God, he didn't break. <laughs> Vibration. Right, you're in for it now. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, I see. Oh, don't go away. Don't go away. I've got just a thing for you. Yes. A real sledgehammer. Well, look at these. That's chalk and cheese there, boys. What's this one? A 28 pound sledgehammer? Ugh. Right. Get a bit of leverage on this daffodil bulb. I can't break it. It's impossible to break. Oh, I've got it now. Not laughing now, are you, pal? <laughs> he must have been drinking his legless. Oh dear. I feel a hit just there. Could move a little bit more, try the small one. Yes. Thus endeth Romeo and Julieta. They thought they were tough, they thought they were as hard as concrete. Not as hard as Sammy Sledge. I'd like to break that down, because that's going to be a lump to put in the car. I've defeated, I can't break it in anymore. Whew. As I say, I've got nothing against Romeo and Juliet, or even William Shakespeare. But we've had it years, it's got to go, and it makes it look so much better, and I don't have to spend money painting it every year. I've got to tidy it up now, though. Good bit of fun, I took all that anger out. I don't feel like I'm in lockdown now. I sort of feel like I should be in prison when I'm breaking that up like hard labour. 